Hey guys, Mal the Train Tutor back in the studio and back with another Back to Basics Come Pro Tips video for you. Yes, we're delving into a material and we're looking at it in depth so I can answer most of the common questions associated with the material. And the material of this vid, if you can't tell by the title, DAS modeling clay, air drying clay. So what are we actually gonna be doing in this video? Well, dead simple. First, we're gonna be talking about the actual clay, what it is, what its properties are, so you can understand it better. After that, I'm gonna talk about some of the common problems, such as how you get around the problems with adherence with it, because air drying clay can come off easily on a few things, but there's a couple of little techniques that really help it key things and make it sort of sturdy up. On top of that, we're gonna be looking at ways of reducing the cracking you get when working with air drying clay. We'll talk about molds, we'll talk about texturing it and that sort of stuff and a few other things. But essentially I wanna cover all the major questions associated around terrain building because this clay is used for a lot of things and a lot of the stuff just isn't applicable for what we do. So I'm gonna concentrate on what we do. Okay, so if you wanna come down to the table, yeah, so here we have two packs of Daz air drying clay. Okay, white and terracotta. As far as I'm aware, it's only a color change that's the difference, okay? Uh, the white one, it's kind of gray until it dries, but that's the moisture content in it. Now, it's clay and it's air drying, which makes it different from the likes of Milliput, or green stuff, which are two part epoxies. And what this means is if you mix them together, there's a chemical reaction that causes them to harden. Yeah. Now what happens with air drying clay is air drying clay has moisture in it that makes it soft. Okay. As that moisture evaporates, it hardens. Okay. So they both harden. Okay. The difference being is that air drying clay will actually reduce volume as it hardens, whereas the epoxies won't. So that's the first thing to realize with air drying clay. If you're using air drying clay, you depend on the bulk of it and what you're doing in, with it, you have to factor in that shrinkage. Or, yeah, depend on what you're using it for, you'll have cracking problems, you'll have adherence problems, and it may even have warping problems. Okay, I've seen this stuff used to make the banks either side of, say, a road long strip. And when it's cured, you can see how it's, it's literally raised up. And so that's an issue. Now, there's two types of clay. There's what we call normal ceramic clay and then there's air drying clay. Now the difference being is that ceramic clay will air dry, okay? It won't fully harden like this will, but it gets the majority of its strength when it's fired in a kiln, essentially a big oven. And that, that actually changes its molecular structure and it actually makes it hard. Now the difference is, once normal clay has been fired, yeah, that's it, that's what it is, okay? With air drying clay, if you get a ball of air drying clay and you let it dry out, if you put it back into water, yeah, it will reactivate, it will absorb that moisture and it will go soft again. So, Whereas normal clay, it's fired and then that's what you've got and nothing is gonna change that. Yeah, with air drying clay, you can come in after it's dried and manipulate it with water, which is important, okay? Because we'll be talking a bit about that as we go along, but it's gonna factor into a few different things. So, very quick tip. Now obviously, yeah, I've got two packs of DAS here. They're four pound each. I think I bought two for a fiver from the works. Okay, to be perfectly honest, I only tend to use these packs when I'm doing tutorials. The reason being is when I'm working on my own stuff, I tend to buy it in, what you call it, 12 and a half kilo bags. Okay, uh, this is from Scholar. Yeah, and I think I got this on eBay for about 20 quid. Okay, which is a massive saving, but obviously it's a big bag. It's only really a saving if you're gonna use it all. Otherwise, it's just, you know, takes up space on the shelf and it's money you, you can't spend on anything else. So, if you're doing a lot of clay work, look at buying commercial bags, okay? If you're just doing the standard sort of wargaming stuff, these packs are absolutely fine. It takes you a while to get through a pack. Right, two secs. So, back again. Right, I've got some air drying clay here and as you can see, it's in a bit of a scrag pack. Yeah, it's not been wrapped up properly, but it's still fine, it's still soft. 
a lot of people will go on and they'll keep banging on at you about, oh, you've got to make sure your air drying clay is, you know, sealed properly and all that sort of stuff. I've never bothered to seal it properly. Occasionally, I'll get a little bit of dryness just on the most exposed areas. A little bit of moisture in there sorts that. Or if you've got a particularly hard bit that's cured, just rip it off, throw it on the floor. Or in the bin, I throw it on the floor. <laughs> yeah. And then you're absolutely fine. So, yeah, with regards to storing your clay, yes, it is handy if you can keep them in an airtight packet and that sort of stuff, but don't be overly concerned. Like I say, this one's been pretty much just like that, sat on my shelf for six months, and it is still, if I open it up, yeah, still perfectly fine, moist, exactly as I was expected, to be perfectly honest. Now, when it comes to working with this stuff, there's a whole host of tools you can use, but two of the things that you're really gonna need are, one, water, okay? It's air drying clay, it is, I don't think it's solvent is water, if you know what I mean, but if you mix water in with it, it washes it, it dilutes it, and water's how you get it off your hands. On top of that, you're gonna need a rag, okay? Now, this is because as you work it, it will dry and stick to your fingers, and your fingers will end up caked in the damn stuff. So, a rag that you can just clean your hands off is very important if you wanna be working with this stuff. Next off, I've got some tools. Now, I use all sorts of tools to work with that. Mainly, I do most of my work with my hands, but a couple of tools for you. You can get these essential pallet knives. Yeah, they're plastic. I got them from an art shop, about 15p each. They're good for doing various things and pushing the clay into various positions. They're not as sturdy as the metal ones, but they're, they're easily good enough for working with this sort of clay. Metal ones are obviously better. Yeah, they're obviously more expensive as well. Now, the other thing is you have clay shapers. Okay, now these are silicon tip type brushes. Okay. And you can get them in various sizes, shapes, that sort of stuff that you can use for putting details in the clay. This is for the fine detailing work. Say you were working on some like sandbags or something like that and you really wanted to go to town with them. Yeah, that's where these come in. Beyond that, a sharp knife and you're, you're pretty much good to go. So those are the tools. That's generally what Daz is and how to keep it and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Let's start dealing with issues, okay? Now, the first issue I always hear when, you know, people are talking about Daz is people keep telling me that I stuck Daz down and then when it dried, it, it just fell off. Yeah, that happens a lot. It does, okay? The reason being is if we get our Daz and we get ourselves a couple of blobs, yeah, so, a couple of blobs, yeah. So, two blobs, and we've got a bit of MDF here. Now, if I get one piece, okay, and I push it onto my MDF, and I spread it out, you can tell already as I'm trying to spread it out, it's not really sticking. So if I try and smooth it out round the edges, yeah, see if I can get it to stick a bit better and key in. Yeah, that's a little bit better, but not 100% confident about that. And I know I'm not 100% confident about that because I'm 100% confident it's gonna fall off from experience. But if we then get this piece, okay, this piece of wood, yeah, we get some water on our hands. We put some water on our wood first, okay, and then get our clay, and we push that in. What that does is the moisture in it keeps the clay at the bottom that's contacting the MDF, it keeps it activated. Okay, and it dilutes it a little, which means it soaks into those wood fibers already. Yeah, you can see I'm actually struggling to actually move this stuff around because it's, it's fixed firmly. Yeah, quick bit of a rub. Yeah, and if I bring that up for you, yeah, you can see the difference of how that one's blended in compared to how that one's sort of sitting on top of it. Just a little bit of water onto the surface that you're applying it to will make a massive difference in the adherence, okay? Now, <coughs> this applies whether you're using it to bulk up bases, anything like that for like potential tree stumps or you're making undulated terrain or anything like that. Uh, same with doing river banks and uh, ridges along roads, that sort of stuff. Wetting it will always give it a better adherence. Okay, now the best way of demonstrating this is obviously see what it's like when it's dry. 
So this is going to be one of those videos where we're flash forward in and flash backward in again. So bit of a time warp. Let's have a look at it once it's dry. So guys, our pieces have all dried and it's time to take a look. Come on down. Yeah, and as you can see, yeah, nice, plain and clearly, there is a massive difference between the one that we didn't apply water with and the one that we did apply water with. If I bring it up for you, yeah, there you go. See how this one, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Not even stuck down. Whereas we go over to this one, yeah. I can chip at the edges, but I can't get this thing off. Sorry about the wavy hands, guys, but there you go. So as you can see, applying just a little bit of your water, okay, to your surface before you put your dads down, lets that bottom surface melt a bit, soak in a bit, key a bit, yeah? And it will always in improve the adherence, okay? So that's the first sort of thing with adding water and getting ad adherence. Right, back to the other melt. Okay, so we've sorted the adherence problem. Now to move on to another common problem. One of the things I often get comments about is, my Daz has cracked. Okay, what do I do? Why is it cracked? Well, dead simple, okay? What you've got to remember is Daz is an air drying clay, which means as a clay, yeah, it has moisture in it, which adds volume. For it to dry and cure and go hard, it must lose and evaporate that moisture, which means it reduces in volume. Now that's absolutely fine if it can reduce in volume, but if you've spread it out over a large area and it can't shrink down, it will retract from itself and it will crack, okay? Now, I had a good chat, yeah, with Emma from EM Watch at Ceramics down in the studios. Yeah, she's a ceramicist. She works with clay every day. Okay, and I had a chat with her about the cracking with air, air drying clay and you know, what, what can you do about it? Why does it happen? That sort of stuff. And how she's explained it to me is dead simple. First off, you get cracking with air drying clay simply because the drying process is uneven. So one piece will dry quicker than another piece, often because it's thinner Okay, and that will result in excessive shrinkage in that area, then as the other bits, and that will set quicker than the other one will set, and so they don't move and they essentially separate. Okay, now, a couple of ways of combating this. One, go careful about where you dry it. Don't dry it in somewhere that's excessively warm. It may seem like a no-brainer to put air drying clay somewhere where it's nice and warm to dry, but that excessive drying process causes the top to dry initially first, yeah? And because that dries before the, the material underneath it, yeah, as the material underneath it dries and shrinks, it cracks the top and that's where you get the cracks from. So you're actually better drying air drying clay, work that you've done with air drying clay, in a more cooler envi environment than an actual drier one, okay? Because it's a more gradual drying process. So instead of the top drying first and then the bottom drying second and causing that cracking effect, what you get is you get a gradual drying effect from the whole, whole of it, the top and the bottom and, and the middle, at an even pace. So it all goes at the same pace and there's no cracking. So you can use a cooler environment to dry it. Another thing is avoid hot spotting. So don't put it in a window where the sun is on one side of it and it's not on the other. Okay, in fact, direct sunlight, keep it well away from direct sunlight because that's such a harsh heat source that it will locally dry an area quicker than another area. Now, there is another technique. If you're really, really worried, okay, yeah, there's another technique you can do. And basically it's about slowing the drying process down, down by introducing a little bit of moisture. So here, yeah, what I've got is I've got two splodges of Daz Modeling Putty on EPVC. Yeah, and if you notice, I've just dragged my blade edge through them. Yeah, a load at different angles, basically getting a rough thatch sort of thing. You'll be seeing the proper tutorial in the future, guys. That's half done. Yeah, once it's all, once that terrain techniques video is done, I'll, I'll 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 publish the thatching one. But I'm only halfway through it. But yeah, there is a clay element to it. It's a bit like this. 
<laughs> but anyway, so I put a rough bit of thatch on it. Now it's quite thin. The lines that I've striked through it should aggravate the cracking because I've already introduced cracks. And what I'm going to do for you is these will take overnight to dry. So what I'm going to do is this cloth very quickly. It's damp. Yeah, but not soaked, unlike my floor. Yeah, what I'm going to do, it's dead simple. I'm just going to drape this over one of them. Okay, now that should be enough moisture, yeah, in this damp cloth to stop that cracking effect, to slow down the drying to a stage where we don't have any problems with any excessive cracking. And as always, proof is in the pudding is when it dries. So, shall we time warp? Let's do it. So our little thatch tests have all dried and it's time to take a look. Yeah, come on down. Okay, so we've got a two uh, a little thatch test. Remember, it's not exactly how I'm doing thatching. Yeah, it's just, I knew these would, we'd have problems with these. So we've got the one that we didn't put the cloth on and we've got the one that we did put the cloth on. And if I bring up the one that we didn't put the cloth on, yeah, it hasn't cracked, yeah, but if you look, it has warped. Okay, now essentially what this is, okay, is rather than it cracking as it shrunk, it's actually separated from the base piece, piece and it's shrunk inwards. Remember guys, cracking is essentially where a piece can't shrink in from its edges, yeah, and so as, it, as its volume reduces, it shrinks in essentially from the middle bit because the edges are secure and it cracks and separates. Now in this case, as I said, it hasn't actually cracked, yeah, but it has shrunk and raised. So because it hadn't adhered properly, it has actually shrunk, yeah? And if it had adhered properly, this would crack. But if we look at the one, which what you call it, which we put the cloth over, there's been no shrinkage. It's still adhered, yeah? It's dried nice and even, it hasn't lifted, it hasn't warped, and there's no sign of any cracking. So with this little test, it's very much, I was hoping it was, it would, I'd, I'd come back in today and find it cracked. Obviously it has cracked, or it has shrunk unevenly, causing it to warp and much will it come away, but it hasn't cracked. But hopefully you understand the difference of a, you know, the, the slow curing of it, okay? I don't go for uneven. If you've got uneven places on it, okay, you need to manage that with a damp cloth. And as you can see, it does work a treat. Okay guys, so that's the tip with controlling the cracking and controlling the warping if, if you want, yeah. Yeah, uh, give it a go. I'm sure it'll help you guys. Yeah, right, let's move on. Right, now the next question I get commonly asked about this stuff is can you use it in molds? And yes, you can, but you've got to factor in that factor that it does shrink. Okay, and it's important if you're gonna use molds where you're expecting them to come out the same size as you put in. Daz is not the material for that, okay? You want something like Cristocal or a resin, basically something that's an epoxy, i.e. it cures through a chemical process that doesn't reduce its volume. Daz dries, the moisture leaves, we, we reduce the volume. Now that being said, it's still will go into molds. So what I've got here is I've got a Herstart silicon mold and I've got a Woodland Scenics rock mold. Okay, and I've got a bit of PV, I've got, not PVA, I've got a bit of DAS modeling putty. Now I wanna put it into one of these molds to just sort of show you. So first thing, as it's been in my hands, it's already starting to dry. So dip it very quickly in some water and reactivate the edges. Yeah, pick what you're gonna push it into, yeah and give it a good push, yeah? Now, because it's wet, you can take the excess off and give it a good squidge around. Come on, in you go. Yeah, and that should pop out perfectly fine. Okay, I say should, because to be perfectly honest guys, this isn't what I put in silicon molds. I know you can do it, I've seen it done, I've just never done it before. So, if this doesn't come out all right, well at least I'm not saying that I know what I'm doing on this one yet, but it's proof of the pudding for you and it's proof of the pudding for me. Now with the one that's seen it's rock mold, exactly the same, I'm gonna just throw some in. Now the thing about molds with this stuff, as it's been explained to me, 
and it makes actually quite a lot of sense yeah because it's you don't need a mole release because the first thing it's going to do is it's going to dry and the the fact that it, it dries much like we have with the adherence problems when it dries yeah that's actually a benefit in mold making it, in using molds the other thing is obviously we already know it's going to shrink okay and if it shrinks in a mold it will come away from the edges of the mold making it easier to remove so although i've never done this before and i'm quite curious to see how it turns out i have been reliably informed that i should have no problems whatsoever with demolding and it should take the details pretty damn well yeah i was told that if you're really concerned about the details, add a little bit extra water to your watch colour, to your DAS modelling putty to make it a little bit softer. But, you know, we should be fine with this. And we'll see how it comes out once these have been demoulded. Yeah, so once again, we're going to jump into the future. Come on. Okay, guys, all dry and it's demoulding time. Quite interested on this one. So if we go for the silicon, and I'll bring this up nice and close so you can see. So we wedged it in. Yeah, and if I just pull that out, there you go. Now, because of the moisture and everything, it hasn't fully cured. Come on, focus on me, you git. There you go. But there you are. Let me just break these little tabs and stuff off. Yeah, obviously once it's fully dry now, it's out of the mould, you'll be able to watch colour, you'll be able to clean it up a lot nicer. But, yeah, and if I bring it really close up, can you get that detail? Yes, you can. There you go. Okay, now moving on to the Woodland Scenics one, our rock mold. Yeah, so there we are. And you'll notice no problem demolding these whatsoever. Yeah, I just don't want to touch the undersurface. And there you go, guys. It's taken the detail absolutely fine and exactly and come really clean out of the mold. Okay, so much like you, I've, I've also discovered that. Actually, it's, it's not bad, okay. Do you know what, if I'm honest, yeah, I was sort of thinking about this, yeah, last night, because I don't normally put this stuff in moulds, you know, it's not something I do, because I always mix up some Christocal, yeah. Do you know what, as a quick one, if you just needed a couple of little pieces for the next day, yeah, yeah, I can see that, I can see that a lot, yeah, because Christocal takes time to mix up and weigh up and all that sort of stuff. But if you are going to be doing a lot of uh, mould work and that sort of stuff, don't use Daz Modeling Putty, guys. Go for Christocal R. Christocal R is uh, it's a mould compound used for making uh, moulds, slip moulds for glass firing. And basically what that is, is you make a mould of a bowl shape, yeah? And you cast it in what you call it, Christocal R, so you get this big block of Christocal R. Yeah, Christocal R is about 10 times stronger than um, Plaster of Paris, so it's really tough stuff. And then what you do is you basically place sheets of glass over it, put it in a kiln, fire it a couple hundred degrees, the glass melts and seeps into the Christocal R mould because the Christocal R mould can take that sort of temperature. That's what it's designed for, firing glass. Okay, but from a, a modeling point of view, it's 10 times stronger than plaster of Paris. Yeah, it takes three minutes to mix. You demold in 10 minutes, which is faster than plaster of Paris. Okay, and it's roughly a quid a kilo, which is dirt cheap. A hell of a lot cheaper than using DAS modeling putty. But to see the results of these, if I wanted a quick one or two pieces and they're easy to push in, yeah, I could see DAS modeling putty working for that. I've learned something. Excellent. Right, back to younger Mel. Go on. Okay, the next common thing that I get asked about DAS modeling is, have you got any tips for using things like ro textured rollers and uh, texturing devices on it? Whenever I do it, I keep ripping the DAS up. Quite common, this one. Once again, it's very much down to one, the adherence, okay, i.e. getting it stuck down to your piece better. Obviously, if it's not properly stuck down to the piece and the adherence to this, yeah, is greater than the adherence to this, your dad's is going to stick to this and not that, and it will lift, okay? So, how do you do it? Well, obviously, first, put a bit of water down as you've watched it, as you put your dad's down. That'll get your dad's to stick far better okay and 
you know, you'll have less problems. Now I haven't done it on this one. I've just pushed this straight down onto my card, okay? Because I don't want it to adhere properly because I get to show you how to apply, how to use these, yeah, with sort of something that should rip up. Now, when it comes to doing texturing, what you don't want to do is you do not want to texture raw DAS out of the packet. It will stick to your roll quite easily, okay? What you want to do is come along and you've got two choices. To stop it sticking, you either make it wetter or drier, okay? Now, with regards to the drying, what you can do is you can wait just 10, 15 minutes till the very top surface starts to air dry. At that point, it's no longer tacky, yeah? And you can roll over with one of these quite easily or whatever you're using to drop a texture in, very easy, okay? And it will not stick. If you're a little bit concerned about it sticking, okay, while you're doing that, what you can do is you can sprinkle some talc across it and if there's any still if there's any damp patches that are still there the talc will layer across those and, and give you a nice dry non-sticky surface to roll your texture and because underneath it's still soft as you roll it and put your details in it'll go in absolutely fine now that's the dry method okay the other method is to go wet obviously when it's a little bit more wet and slippy it doesn't stick either okay so you can come along Little bit of water, smooth it over. Yeah, and then you can get your rolling pin and very simply just roll it along. Now the important thing to note here is do not press all the way through. Do not force it really hard down. Otherwise you will stick these little cobble bumps into your roller and you'll rip them off. The water will prevent it sticking as long as you're not too forceful that you force the water that's between the roller and the DAS out. So you're just back to DAS and the roller. But there you are, a little bit of water on it and if I bring it up, absolutely fine as a texture. Obviously depth and things like that you can practice with. But that's essentially how you use your rollers, yeah, your texturing, with your PVA, okay? And it works absolutely fine. Just make sure you give your, your rollers and stuff a good wash and get the, the residual sort of stuff off them afterwards because it's a lot easier than when they dry. What you don't want is Daz modeling putty in between all your little fine details on your pin. You know what I mean? Yeah, you don't want to lose your detail for the sake of having Daz in. Remember, if you do, stick it in some water overnight Next day, get it out, get a toothbrush on it and give it a quick scrub clean. They come absolutely fine. They never get quite back to what they were, but they're certainly good enough for what we're doing. So that's using uh, the texturing rolling pins and putting texture on them. Remember, you can either go dry or you can go wet, but don't do it on raw, watch it, uh, raw this stuff. Okay, so I don't think I really need to show you this when it's dry. Okay, so that's that one done. And then finally, what I'd like to talk about is, yeah, uh, this idea of adding additives. You hear it every so often, you know, oh, add this into it, add this into it. To be truthful, yeah, there are a range of products that you can add into Daz Clay, and they're made by Daz, the company that makes it. And you can get various colors, and you can get pigments you can mix in to doing arty stuff and create wonderful designs for the stuff you're pushing in your silicon molds and your rubber molds and your plastic molds. Yeah, but that is very much an arts and crafts technique. The fact of the matter is, I can't think of a single place where I would apply Milliput that it's not gonna get painted over. So all those sort of additives with regards to colors and glitters and all that sort of stuff doesn't apply to us. The only one that I often hear coming up is the one where people talk about mixing PVA in, yeah, uh, to get stronger DAS, okay. Uh, right, yes it does. It, it, it's an arts and crafts technique from the, the crafters, okay. There's a few uh, down here that do it and basically, because you're introducing PVA into the DAS, now obviously we know PVA, we know as it dries, it hardens and it hardens quite well. You're essentially blending that PVA all the way through. DAS is air drying, P 
PVA is air drying. So the curing process is the same for both. So they will both cure along along the, the, the same way. And the result is a more porcelain, yeah, uh, sort of DAS hardened. And what I mean by that is it's a little bit shinier, it's a little bit smoother, it's a lot harder, okay? But it doesn't really matter, okay? Now, a lot of people will turn around and they'll say, oh, you mixed uh, PBA in to prevent it cracking. That's a load of rubbish, okay? And um, that's quite easy to explain. We know that this stuff cracks because the water volume in it dissipates and its volume reduces. And quite often, because it's spread over a large area, the amount can't shrink down with it, yeah? PVA is a water-based glue. It's made with water in it, okay? It, it cures by evaporating water. So by mixing PVA in here, not only are you adding the PVA glue, the polyvinyl acetate, you're also adding more water, which is increasing the volume, okay, of the actual raw mix. And when it's cured, it's decreasing the amount that's left when it's cured. So it will actually exaggerate the cracking in some cases. Yeah, now it does make it slightly harder and that sort of stuff, but PVA, uh, DAS modeling clay, it dries hard enough for what we need it to do anyway. So to be perfectly honest, guys, mixing PVA into it, I've done it in the past. I've had bad problems with it. and I don't see any benefit for our application. Now, if you're doing crafting models where you stick in a big blob of this, i.e. you're not doing thin sheets, which is what we normally do it. Yeah, we normally use it for texturing roofs, for thatching, putting roads in with our cobblestones, sandbags, stuff like that. But generally, thin applications, okay? The crafters tend to use it a lot more, what you call it? A lot more bulkier when they do their stuff, yeah? So they don't have the cracking, shrinking problems, yeah, that we do when we apply it thinly. So yes, you can throw PVA in there, in some cases, it will exaggerate the cracking, okay? Specifically, if it's spread thinly or long, thin pieces, that will increase the warping factor, okay? See what I mean about what you call it? What I said about you need, <laughs> need, a, need a cloth with this stuff, otherwise it gets all over your hands. But yeah, and mixing PVA in, it's more a craft technique than a terrain builder's technique. I've never really had the need to do it, so don't feel like you have the need to do it. So, wrapping it up, we have, we talked about the general uh, qualities of DAS and how it works. We, you now know about the, the fact that it's a volume reducing material because it's air drying. You know you can reactivate it with water. You know that you can use water to get far better keying, to get far better adherence. And not just that, adherence to any su substrate you're going onto and putting clay on top of clay re a dry clay and then sticking more clay on top, perfectly fine. It forms a great bond because it dissolves it, it allows it to blend into each other and then dry keyed solid. So we've covered that one. We've talked about how to reduce cracks by controlling drying, using a, a cooler drying area, using a damp cloth to, to, to retard the drying so it dries at a much slower rate. Um, we've talked about using it in molds and silicon molds and rubber molds. We've shown you textured, what you call it, uh, textured roller pins and how to do it with that. And we have also covered elements of adding things in. And generally on that, you don't really need to, guys. Bit of water, you know, if it dries out. Other than that, you're good to go. So that's it for this. This back to basics come pro tips on using DAS modeling putty. That is pretty much everything I know about the stuff. I've learned about the stuff from using it and everything I can get from the ceramicists that are in Spode as well, who have a bit more experience of working with clay and that sort of stuff than I do. Yeah, so as always guys, if you've got any questions, get them down in the comments. That's what I'm here for. And if you've got any information to add to this pool of information, I'm always interested in learning new things, guys. So get those in the comments as well. Like it, share it. And as always, guys, if you do enjoy videos like these and you do enjoy me sharing my knowledge and helping you with your hobby, please consider jumping on the board and supporting me. Whether it's a one-off on PayPal down below or whether you're jumping on a $1 pledge per patron per month, yeah, it all helps, keeps everything going. And remember, if you jump on Patreon, it's early access to the videos and the projects, guys. So 
There's a little bonus there for you as well. And in the meantime, I've got loads of videos to get cracked on with, so I'll be coming back to you with another video rather soon. Look after yourself, yeah? All the best. Ta-da.